Um, hello, everybody, and welcome, a special welcome to Kerry. Um, I have been following you on Instagram for a while, and okay. it is just <laughs> so amazingly uplifting, creative, fun. Um, and I'm very, very pleased to be talking to you in real, well, as in real life as we yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so obviously we absolutely need to hear a bit of background about okay. you, why upholstery, um, you know, about your creative career. Okay, so I have had a very mixed working life. So I wouldn't actually say I've had a career as such, uh, really. Um, I kind of, yeah, left school with okay qualifications, actually. I did okay, um, but didn't like school. Um I was more interested then in boys when I left. So, you know, oh, you're went another way. To my own heart. See yeah, there? I just got distracted. And what can I say? Um, and then I ended up having my first daughter fairly young. Um, so I've always worked, but it's been literally just jobs in shops or offices or like I was secretary for years and I hated it. Um, and whatever I could do to earn money, really. I had several small businesses along the way, but I wouldn't say any of them made big money. Um, they were more, they weren't exactly side hustles because I worked really hard at them, but they didn't pay a lot of money. They kind of made money sometimes. So I did a bit of festival trading. I used to have a fairy stall. So that was pretty cool. I love that, actually. I actually love that. Um, so I, because I like people, I like meeting people and chatting to people. So that kind of worked for me. Um, I get bored really, really easily. So I really like that. So I did that. And then I actually, um, I bought an, an old VW camper van. Mm -hmm. And then um, with the purpose of setting up a business, set up a business, um, originally doing holiday hire. And then we ended up buying more cattle. I ended up buying more um, campers and went up to the split screen ones and ended up doing loads of wedding hire. So I ended up with like, I think we had five campers, but I sold a couple and then bought another split. So I ended up with three splits. So, which I was very proud of my fleet. And um, I don't really know how we did it because we didn't have any money. So I don't, don't really know. I think that was like, yeah, <laughs> just kind of like, you know, you just like move house and think I'll just take a bit there and pick a bit at the endowment there. And um, anyway, that's what we did. And um, I ran that for about six years, I think I did. And it was pretty successful, but it was quite a hard business to be in because it was, it's changed since then, actually. I came out at the wrong time. Um, it was always Saturdays. So you get all these vans and then, you know, you can only make money on one day of the week, essentially. Um, it just sort of changed in the last year when I'd already decided that I was selling up, it changed and I was starting to get them through the week. I think that would have been a whole different proposition, to be honest. And I'd probably have stuck with it had that been the case earlier because then I could have made decent money. Um, anyway, so I sold that and I needed to do something else and I thought I need to make money and... Um, haven't really got a career to fall back on so I know like it's different when people like at sort of our age are thinking of changing because I see this quite a lot especially with women when they're thinking of changing they've got a career so to, to make the change is a lot harder because you're giving up regular income all the benefits that go with that job or career you've had um, I guess in some ways I had it easier because I didn't have anything to lose because, you know, like, what am I giving up? Nothing really, you know, just another dead end job. Um, but I basically on a complete whim decided I am really creative anyway. And I just thought I need to, um, and that, you know, I just like running my own businesses. So I was like, I need to do something creative. And I think I saw a picture on Pinterest or something of a really beautiful chair. And I, up to that point, I had no real interest in upholstery at all. But I reckon I could do that. You know, like that, like that would do yeah like you do I just thought do you know what I'm quite practical good with my hands I can um and I'm you know quite good creatively like colors and all that kind of stuff so I thought I'll do that I wonder if there's an upholstery place that I can go and learn and I literally I kid you not I googled it found one about half an hour ago half an hour away um rung them up and said um do you, you know I'll bring up at this course and she was like yes yes you can start blah 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 this is what it is you know pop down at some point I said right I'll come now shall I and I literally got in my car, drove there, had a look around and went, yeah, OK, I'll do that and signed up to it. So probably not my best decision ever, I would have to say, because <laughs> it was a lot of money. It cost about it does cost a lot to train properly. So it cost me £10,000 to train. Wow. Yeah, which is a lot of money. 
And the only reason, to be honest, that I could do that is because I'd just sold my camper van business. So, yeah, we at the time, you know, I had some money. So I put 10,000 of it towards that. Then what happened was I then got a slip disc. Well, I'd already had it. I had a slip disc in my back that I thought was getting was going to get better, but it didn't. And I actually went on about six months and it just got progressively worse to the point like I literally couldn't stand up. And then so I remember the day I was supposed to start upholstery college. I remember being in the shower, having to sit down in the shower because I couldn't stand to shower, crying, thinking, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And like if I was an ordinary same person, I'd have phoned up and said, I'm really sorry. You know, like this has happened. Can we postpone? But no, I decided that I would go in and do it anyway so I went in and basically you do like this free sort of modules that you do of your training and I did module one without being able to stand up and it was just a disaster to be honest and I think they thought I was quite weird when I was there I guess I was really wasn't myself because I was in so much pain I mean it literally got to the point I wouldn't drink a cup of tea because I couldn't make it around to the toilet because I couldn't walk <laughs> so it was just like really stupid and I like I really didn't enjoy it to be honest I didn't enjoy the training I know that's probably not what I should come on here and say but I didn't I didn't enjoy it it's honest uh, I liked the people the college was nice the people were nice and everything else I didn't really like the upholstery and I think it was probably a combination of I just didn't like the whole upholstery and the fact that I was in so much pain anyway every everything was such an effort and um but I, then I felt like I'm committed now. I'm really like that kind of loyal person. Once I commit to something, I'm all in and um, don't want to let anybody down. And I kind of felt I committed. And then I was kind of also, I've committed com like financially quite a lot at this point. So I was like, I can't really turn around and say, you know what, I've made a dreadful mistake. Well, I could have done, but I didn't. I felt, I felt I couldn't do that. So I stuck with it. I did get better. Once my back got better, it did get better. But I think I just, yeah, I struggled with the whole training thing. I don't know if it was being back in a college environment. It's a long time since I was at college. Um, I struggled with that. I don't really like learning. I find it like quite difficult and quite dull. So um, I didn't really thrive on that. And I was surrounded by people. I would say a mixture of men and women at the up half of street, if anybody's thinking of doing it and is interested that way, it's like more women now than men although traditionally it was a, a male role um, when I was training, but I wouldn't say that all of the people that were training were going to go into business with it. There was quite a lot. Choose my words carefully here. Financially secure women of a certain age. I'm going to say that we're there because they love it, you know, and they, they can spend their days learning things just because they can spend their days learning things. Um, so there was quite a lot of that, but it was a real mix. It was a real mix. And there was also people that worked full time or trying to fit it around, you know, or working nights and then trying to do it. But it was a mix. Um, I would say most people that learn were, I certainly wasn't one of the oldest ones there, put it that way. Mm -hmm. So there were quite a lot older than me there. Um, older rather than younger, actually, interestingly. Mm -hmm. It certainly wasn't kids coming out of college or coming out of school doing it. It was quite rare for somebody in their 20s to be there, I would say. Most people were older, and I would say a lot in their sort of 40s, 50s upwards. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, very, very diverse um, mix. Um, and, yeah, and a really diverse group, actually, in, in, in every term, you know. So that was interesting. Um, I didn't thrive on the upholstery. I didn't thrive at college. I didn't thrive at the upholstery. I think because I'd had such a difficult start with it, my confidence went. And then I just felt I couldn't do it. And one of the tutors had a really annoying thing of saying, oh, have you seen so-and-so? Is they so bloody good at it? And you know, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, yes, I've seen theirs. Yes, aren't they wonderful? Um, sorry, Ben, sorry. All right. Oh, um, sorry. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, that, that I, I, I think the whole thing, once I'd lost my confidence, I kind of lost my confidence a bit with it, but I persevered through. And then, then I set up on my own. So I was, it was always with the view of setting my own business up. So I set my business up and I, I rented like a little unit. It's actually worked the same place where I am now, but a much smaller unit. It was like a, like an old converted stable type block. And I, in all honesty, I hated it. I actually hated it. I hated everything about it. Um, hated the upholstery. I hated the fact that I was on my own all day. I hated the fact that you'll learn a skill, but like something like upholstery, you never learn everything because each chair is different, you know? Mm -hmm. So 
you know, and actually when you look back at what you actually learn is so little, you know, comparison, you're like, oh my God. And there's nobody to ask, you know, there's like, you're on your own basically. Mm. And I was quite lucky that I managed to make a few contacts with people because I'm quite good at chatting to people. So, and I still rely on them now. I still ring them up when I get stuck now and like, can you help me? Like, what should I do? And um, so the, the other women have been really supportive actually. Um, so yeah, I didn't, I wouldn't say I sort of particularly thrived on it. And then, um, then what happened was, <laughs> like, then, then this happened. Then I um, bought some cinema seats uh, on a whim because I love buying vintage. That's my passion. I buy a lot of vintage anyway for myself anyway. And um, I just like buying and selling a bit of a Dell boy. So I bought some, put them up on my Instagram. Somebody said, oh yeah, can you do them for my dining room? Did them. I'm um, quite plain, just a blue velvet or something. Did them that didn't think much more of it. Bought another set another on another vintage buying thing and just on a whim. And somebody said, oh, can you do them in pink velvet and lots of gold everywhere? And that set just, it took off. I'd like put it on Instagram and it just flew. And that has like that kind of launched where I am now. So from that point, it went forward. So if we fast forward, so I've been probably going about five, six years now. So um, COVID was a big turning point for me. So in terms of, A, I got a grant, which was very useful. Um, and that enabled me to grow my business. So um, my business actually boomed, it's out, you know, which is good from my point of view, but I appreciate that a lot of people are in a very, very different position, but I was very fortunate and I know I wasn't the only one. So not every, not every small business struggled in COVID. It was difficult in terms of like, you couldn't go on buying stuff. You couldn't, um, supplies were really difficult. If I wanted to go and buy some screws, I had to queue for half an hour to get, you know, just to get in home base or something stupid like that, you know? And, um, so it was difficult, but it was in terms of business, I was getting loads and loads of orders. Hi. Um, sorry. All right. <laughs> Um, I was getting loads of orders and people were spending on the homes, which, you know, instead of going on holiday, my customers tend to be quite affluent, I would say. Um, I'm a luxury item. So they're people that had the money weren't hit as hard by, you know, like furlough type things as other people and weren't able to spend where they normally would. So I think they spent on the houses heavily. Um, so that was really good. My son came and joined me in the business just as a temporary because his courses all got stopped he's still here now um that was him just floating for a minute ago um so he stayed he's full-time now with me and I've since taken on another upholsterer during at the end of COVID I took on another upholsterer and I've got another part-time lady that helps me as well um who's not an upholsterer she just helps us wherever we need help she just helps um so that's kind of where, yeah, sorry, I've rabbited on. That's way too much, haven't I? Sorry, Joe. No, no, one question went on. I've just gone, whoa. <laughs> but no, that's no. where I got to where I am now. So I would say like now in terms of a business, it's, it's a good business. It's like, it's hard at the moment. It's really challenging out there at the moment. Orders have slowed right down. Uh, not just for me, for everybody, I think. Um, people don't want to spend the money. They're nervous about spending their money. They're spending what money they have got on holidays, et cetera, again. But I don't think it's just that. It's the whole cost of living thing, the war, everything just, you know, makes people uneasy, doesn't it? Um, it's starting to slowly trickle back a little bit. I think people get, if, they, if people that have can afford to spend, I think there's only so long they're not going to spend for, if you know what I mean, and then go, well, actually, you know, like, let's crack on, which thankfully I'm getting different customers now. I'm getting more commercial jobs bigger customers like they're coming in they're spending a lot of money now where you know instead of just two seats they're having loads of stuff done and like a lot of my customers will come back with other things because I do upholstery as well so they will come back they'll buy cinema seats and then they go actually I've got this chair actually can you do this or etc so that's quite good um it's still really really tough to run there's no you know Instagram paints this wonderful picture and I wouldn't want anybody to ditch <laughs> their their safe thing on the thing on the back of what people put out on Instagram because it's not bloody true most of the time I would say that is my honest I know lots of women that do not just what I do do all sorts of businesses and speak to them quite in depth and what's out there it's just not true you know like we can all paint whatever picture we want on Instagram you can be whoever you want to be you can be as successful as you want to be and 
it's not that we're not you know I would never put a lie out because I'm not that person I'm, I'm actually like a super honest person to ridiculous lengths but I would take everything with a pinch of salt you know what you don't know is is how much money they had to start with how much money they're boosting the business up how much they're reliant on theirs does their money does it pay the mortgage or does somebody else their partner pay the mortgage do you, you just don't know not that there's no nobody out there doing it on their own and paying everything because there are there's plenty of people that are but I would have really struggled to get to this point had I not had a partner that could pay my mortgage yeah yeah. Um, to be honest with you it's not that we're living like you know we're not rich by any means and my money is much needed but it's taken a long time to get to this point and even now I need to be putting more in than I am but I'm kind of at the you know an okay point but um I couldn't have done that it had my husband happened to be like the main breadwinner in our family always has been I've always earned a lot lower salary than him so and if I hadn't sold my business, I couldn't have done it because that obviously gave me quite a bit of leeway to like nobody nagging at me for a little while because I put a lot of money into the pot. I made quite a bit of money off the business when I sold. So um, I think, yeah, there's lots of, you know, it's not, we're not all on the same path, are we? And we don't all come from the same starting point, I think is, is, is the crux of it. Yeah, I think that is so very, I mean, it's not nice to hear, but at the same time, be me that honesty and I think that's exactly what why I love Brave Starts is the this kind of win-win you sort of you yeah. you hear the honesty you see the honesty and then you can make a decision right you, it's yeah. kind of a win-win yeah definitely I mean I would say I mean I do honest I, you know I pay myself a reasonable wage but it, I would only just reasonable if you know what I mean um we need to be making more as a business to really get my salary anywhere near what it should be for what I do. Do you know what I mean? I could make the same money in one of my other jobs, to be honest. And I, you know, and that's kind of sad because I have got a skill set and I am sort of a successful business. Do you know what I mean? In terms of we've got orders, we've people pay, we're not cheap by any means, you know, uh, but it's still hard to sort of make enough money to pay everything and my costs are going up same as everybody else's you know yeah. like my gas my electric at work is is through the roof and it's just you know yeah we're on the point like if we come in for a tea break all the lights go out in the other room like no matter what you know where well, we wouldn't have gone to that sort of extreme before mm. but I'm just like no it costs too much so I think you know you can definitely change paths I mean I've proved that I've changed paths like my husband reckons I'm on a five-year cycle and I change path but so I've actually gone past five years this time and I'm actually but I did have a few wobbles and I've like thought well, do I want to do this you know like come on but um I'm kind of like no no don't give up now because it's it's getting there you know but yeah I mean dare I even ask do you like it now I like my business I don't like upholstery very much it's so I mean it's again it's not nice but it is very refreshing to hear I know it's not popular and I would say I'm probably in the minority of people that have trained and feel like that okay I would so I mean I would I can't I kid you not I was surrounded by particularly women who would go oh my god I just love it I just love it so much and I'm just like god I just like I, I don't um but I didn't say that obviously but I was like oh my god I like and, and the more they loved it the less I loved it I think because I was just like I'm always the person in a room that doesn't really fit I, I that's how I feel a little bit and I've always been like um yeah just the person that maybe doesn't fit I mean I like everybody I get on with everybody but I don't I wouldn't say like yeah I fit in that easily so you know that's where I'm used to sitting but um yeah I don't love the upholstery. I love the fact that we can take something that's absolutely horrible and ugly and knackered and I can make it look beautiful. Mm. Do you know, I'm, yeah. I'm really proud of that, but. And do you think there's anything in the fact that you were setting up, setting up as a business, whereas many of them perhaps were not, they were doing it as a hobby? Yeah, I think it's a whole different thing. I, I was constantly, well, how, how am I gonna make enough money? The problem with upholstery, you can make decent money in it. You definitely can. So anybody that is considering it, don't rule it out based on what I'm saying. You can. But the crux of the problem is that you, to make your money, you have to get through a certain amount of work. And when you haven't been doing it very long, you're not at that speed because everything takes so long. That is the crux of the problem. It's so labor intensive 
that no matter what you charge, you're still like, okay, that went wrong. I've got to unpick that bit. Well, you can't, you know, you haven't allowed for like half a day unpicking or, you know, it's very, and they, they would tell you, say they, the professional, you know, upholsterers would say, oh, you just got to price it into your job, but there is a limit to everything. Mm-hmm. We're quite expensive in terms of upholstery. Um, and I had, I had to actually somebody else that didn't train with me. She was quite a few years ahead of me and she actually worked with the guys at the college. And um, she used to say to me, oh, if I charge what you charge, I'd be rich because she was quite quick and quite and really good at it. And I said, well, bloody charge it then. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't, get it. don't get it. I said, you know, they, but she was in a different, I guess. I very much built my business based on being quite luxury and on it, on it being a, a business with a brand and everything else. And that's something that we work really, really hard to keep pushing the brand all the time, the brand, the brand, the brand. Whereas I think a lot of people that, I mean, you could apply this to anything. So if you weren't upholstery, any kind of that kind of trade, I guess, or skill or something like that. I think a lot of them focus very much on what the skill is, you know, like the upholstery, say upholstery, they, they talk a lot about the upholstery, which is fine. But then what makes, you know, if you trained in upholstery, what makes, why would they come to me, not you? Mm. Do, you do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I focused very much on there's a reason that they come to me, not my competitors, you know. Mm. And and a big part of that is me, you know, like the way that I am and I deal with people and stuff. But it's also about the whole brand, like trying to make it, I guess, for want of a better word, quite cool. And um you know and and people want a piece of that don't they that's yeah. what they want because my customers are very much those instagram people so it depends where your customers are i guess um but mine would be i guess women of my kind of age with disposable income and they want their homes to go wow that other people look on instagram and go oh my god the house is beautiful i'm not saying that's why they buy them but i think it's fair to say that is a bit of that that yeah. people want other people to go all that's just you know amazing well, yeah and that is exactly what your instagram portrays i mean like yeah. i said it is very wow that's so cool yeah, yeah. It's really cool so um, that's yeah that's what i've tried to do so and i've tried to keep my brand quite open so although i niched right down on cinema seats against everybody told me not to actually my tutors at college told me not to because i pop back in sometimes and he was like oh don't do that don't do that that's not going to work you're just cutting your market down and i'm like so I listened to that and totally ignored it and went ahead anyway so um, and it worked for me if I hadn't niched down I don't think I'd be with a team now and everything out you know I wouldn't I would say where I am now because it's still not where I want to be but it's yeah I wouldn't have grown at the rate I have if I hadn't niched down I definitely because there's too much competition out there so you're That's talking yeah nicely follow on to skills okay you're talking about your the amount of skills that you clearly have. I mean, I'm, I am a serial career changer as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I have many skills, just not great at any of them. Um, <laughs> and I think one question that will come up is what sort of skills do you think are necessary if you're thinking of going into this sort of creative side of business? Okay, I think... I mean, there's a whole host of things we'll go through, but I think the main, and this is just my view, okay, so like take this with a pinch of salt because it's just my view, but as I say, I mix with loads, and it is predominantly women, so I know this is not just women, so sorry if I'm saying women and it's a bloke watching it, but I don't know that world as much, you know, but I mix with loads of women running businesses and all sorts of businesses, but a lot of creative businesses, and I think when you get very much a very creative based rather than uh, like a one that maybe is a consultant or something like that, but or graphic designer. But when you get very hands on creative, shall we say, I think quite often there tends to be they might be amazed. So say take upholstery as an an example. They might be an amazing upholsterer, but they're not amazing at running a business. Yeah. And that's the problem. And I think that when they then start out, you haven't got the money to, you know, people say, I'll just outsource it. Well, that's all very well. But if you're actually only billing 500 a month, like how are you going to outsource? Do you know, there's no money there to start with. So I now outsource some bits, but still not that much because 
you know, like if every time I outsource, that's coming out of my pay almost. Do you know what I mean? That I need to be paying myself or my team. So um, I think, yeah, you have to be realistic about what your abilities are. And it's, I mean, it's not rocket science, is it? Any of it. But some people find, I, I like running businesses. I thrive on it. I would, in all honesty, run my business and not touch the upholstery ever again quite happily quite happily but I know that lots of people would hate that who end up doing that because as your business grows you need to yeah. you know, work on that side and then they're like oh but actually this is not what I wanted I wanted to do whatever I trained to do or whatever I set out to do um I don't really have that you know problem at all I'm constantly trying to come hands off hands off all the time. <laughs> and then I get dragged back but I mean like I say I've got another upholsterer that works with me now so um she actually does a lot of the upholstery now there's some bits we do together she does a lot and I just jump in when there's a problem you know like but it, I think it's you've got to be very adaptable you've got to be able to understand the whole marketing because you could be the best upholsterer or painter or whatever it might be in the world or seamstress or whatever but if nobody if you can't market that to people then it doesn't matter because nobody's coming knocking at your door and there's only so many friends and family that you can you know I haven't really got that I haven't got a big network so mine all came externally but I know a lot of people start out and they say oh I did the friends and then I did this and then I did that and you're like that's great but eventually you're going to run out you know and and also people that know you never pay you proper money mm. so you know yeah. um I think you've got to be able to do that you've got to be able to do um like all the finance side of it you know like the accountancy yeah. side which again is not difficult but I think you've got to be realistic what are you comfortable doing you know are you, are you okay doing your end of year can you do your tax return can you learn all that I mean there's so much software now to help you to be honest that it's not that difficult but for some people that's a real you know, I think if you think back in terms of, you know, like when we were at school or college or whatever, you get, you know, you tend to get people that are quite academic and then people that are creative, you know, not that the two can't mix. Of course they can. But, you know, I think that's where it gets difficult for people that if they've been drawn very much one way because that's where they're more comfortable and that's where their talent lies, then you've still got to do the other side. If you're running a business for yourself, you've still got to do the other side, haven't you? So, or you've got to be able to outsource that and be comfortable that you can afford to do that, I think. I mean, I outsource things like, now I've got a team, I outsource payroll because that was just an ache. I just couldn't. I mean, it wasn't the, working out how much to pay them, but the government way they do everything now, I'm just like, I just one little bit and you'd be like, what are they talking about? You know, so I, I outsource that now and I outsource the pension part of it as well. Because yeah. that's, a, yeah, another thing that I just couldn't quite get my head around certain bits of it. I was like, I just don't get it. And um, so I outsourced that in the end. But um, so I guess marketing, you've got to be able to do um encompassing the whole you know like whatever your brand is your business your advertising where you're going to advertise where you're going to find your customers um invoicing everybody I guess would come under the accountancy side of it um there's logistics in any business isn't there I actually hate logistics I find them tiring I, I can't understand how people could ever go into a career in logistics I'm just like no kill me now but um you know it, I think as well and you've just got to have <laughs> Do you know what? It, every day you're fighting fires from somewhere. And I think you've got to be happy doing that, you know, and comfortable to do that. Or if you're not, recognize that you're not and get somebody on board that is, that will take that away from you. So like, honestly, Monday, everything went wrong here. Like everything, like, and it was suppliers, deliveries going wrong, fabric going wrong, my sewing going wrong like literally everything and I you know you get to that point you're just like I want to walk out the door and never ever ever come back because it's not worth it you know but then you get another day or you do something and somebody says oh my god this is beautiful you know I'm so happy you know and and it's lovely again um I just love the fact that I can like it, I don't want to work for other people do you know I I, I did have a part-time job for a while alongside this hence that's how I managed to make you know ends meet and I actually did okay at that and I stayed longer than I was going to because I quite liked it and I ended up going for an interview for a branch manager job and and this was actually going quite well at the time but I kind of thought oh, okay you know like the opportunity came up and I went for it this is probably oversharing completely but I'll go with it 
And I, honestly, I've had lots of interviews in my life, I've had lots of jobs, lots of interviews, and I interview fairly well. I normally do okay in an interview. If I can get to that stage, I'm usually pretty good. And this was a second interview, and I've never had a more awful experience in my life it was I sat down and the bloke literally said to me he asked me one word he had one set he asked me one question and I thought it was a relax into it put you at ease I thought that's the question it wasn't he was actually asking me about where I was working at the time because he wanted to know what was happening where I was working at the time I thought it was a polite question it wasn't it was actually no tell me what's happening and then he literally said I wouldn't give you this job Kerry and I just like went what and like I'd literally been there five minutes and like I've never had that happen to me in my life I mean I've gone for interviews not got the job and I've sat in the interview and thought I'm not getting this job but they played the game you know like going along and then thank you very much you know <laughs> but no thanks but yeah no he literally just looked at me and he went I won't give you this job and I was like right. I, I literally could was speechless I, I just I'd never had that and it was so unexpected. I didn't think I was going to get the job, to be honest, but I, I thought I would at least get the courtesy of going through the motions. And he was, and I was like, right, okay, why not? And he said, oh, I don't think you can do it. He just literally went, you can't do it. And I was like, yeah, no, I absolutely can do this job. I actually could have done this job. I mean, I would have sank a lot of money on the fact that I could do that job with my eyes shut. And um and been really good at it actually and he was just like no you can't do it because you haven't got any management skills and you haven't got any experience and I said well I have got management skills I've run my own business before I've had oh, employees yeah. before no that's that's not that doesn't count yeah you wouldn't do it you couldn't do it I wouldn't give it to you do you want a job doing basically what I was already doing at a different branch and I was like no why would I why would I and then he looked at what I'd been doing on my CV because I was doing this and he kind of went Ooh, what's that then and I kind of you know like you feel that big at this point I was literally sweating <laughs> you know when you just like want the ground to open up and you're just like god just get me out of here this is just so awful and um I was you know I said what it was and he was like oh how much do you charge for them and I said and he kind of changed his t tune a little bit and he was like mm, how many do you sell a month I'm trying to like do all the figures you know and he was a bit better then but it's just yeah anyway the upshot of that I mean, I basically wheel spinned out that car park so bloody quick, I tell you. You know, when you're like, get me out of here before I bloody cry, because <laughs> it was that bad. It was literally that bad. It was just the most humiliating experience of my life. And I was just like, I'm so embarrassed. And um, but actually, then I was really angry. I shouldn't have been embarrassed. He should have been embarrassed because that's mm -hmm. not how you interview somebody. You know, yeah, you just know his level, he should, you know, should have known, shouldn't have done that. And um but what it did do is give me the kick up the ass to really push forward. That's when I took on all my other staff and, mm -hmm. did it again and really went all in. Then at that point, I was like, right, I don't need a bloke. I mean, I'm not a crazy feminist for anybody, <gasps> feminist, but I don't need a bloke telling me what I can and can't do. And what I can, you know, uh, I'm done with that crap. <laughs> no. It's old. amazing sometimes what drives us, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. like having this sort of passion. We're actually, no, I like, screw you. I'm going to prove you wrong. Yeah, I just thought, how dare you sit there and tell me what I'm capable of? Not that I don't think this job's right for you, but I like just no, you're not capable. No, excuse me, I am bloody capable. Um, funny, a funny side note to that story. He had to ring me up about a month. Bearing in mind, we were all on furlough at this time. He rang me up a month later and um before we'd even gone back and said um I'm ringing up to see if you'd like the job of branch manager and it was at a bigger branch and no I like, he did not do yeah, that no, really funny his boss that was a very oh, very oh. large piece of humble pie <laughs> yeah did you know you'd think he'd have been embarrassed not at all I said oh that's really odd I said because was it not four weeks ago that I sat in that room with you and you categorically told me to my face you would never give me that job and I was incapable of doing it and he went yeah no I did say that yep I did but would you like this job well at least he owned it uh, yeah like... weird though how arrogant do you have to be to be able to do that and not even feel a little twinge of yeah okay this is a bit awkward <laughs> anyway I didn't take the job I turned it down I was I was tempted but I, I turned it down I just thought no you know what I've got this I'm doing my own thing Mm. Yes, what a nice feeling that must have been yeah no, thank you <laughs> on a bad day occasionally yeah. I do think 
<laughs> you know, wages. Oh, it would be an easy yeah. life. Who wants an easy life, eh? No, precisely. <laughs> this is what I, I've never wanted an easy life. My mother-in-law told me to do something once and she said, I think keep things simple, Kerry, and an easy life. I said, I don't want an easy life. Why the hell would I want an easy life for? No, I don't want a difficult one, but I want a fun one, you know, and like a bit of adventure. So, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I'm like really proud of what we've built up, but I think it's, I, I don't think it's easy to get into these new things and just start up. And I think my, my concern is when people are changing careers is the, I mean, all power to them to do whatever, but it's like, yeah, my thing would be coming back to, it's not, everything's not what it's painted to be. So, you know, be very, very sure on what you're doing. I mean, there's no guarantees in life, is there? No. But, well, you know, that's right. but I think it takes a long time to get to the point of paying yourself a reasonable wage I think unless you go in with good investment in the first Mm. place um I do think this is a bit of a this is probably a bit of tangent as well but I do think there is a real male female divide on this actually because I'm pretty sure if my husband had set up the business that I have he would have been paying himself a decent wage much earlier than I am paying myself a decent wage because he would have said that's the wage that I need to get. So therefore, how can I do that? Let's invest in the business or get investment in to enable us to grow and do that. That's, I think, yeah, and maybe a different, yeah. You could have got here quicker. Basically, the point is I could have got to where I am a lot quicker had I had investment. Well, could have, would have, should have, and all that. Yeah, couldn't because I didn't have it. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's, there's ways of obviously getting to where you want to go a lot quicker. Um, I think a lot of it is as well. It's not who you know. I mean, that's obviously brilliant if you have got loads of contacts. But I think, you know, reaching out and speaking to as many people as you can is always beneficial. So so this to me is is more like Brave Starts to me is Lucy reached out to me. Yes, because I believe in what you're doing. You know, I'm quite, yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm so sick of everything being for young people, you know, and everything like you know, is there and there's nothing once, especially again, I sound like a mad feminist, I'm not, but you know, I think especially women, you go past 40 and you're just like, you're not there anymore. Do you know, like, you know, yeah, you, you know, like, uh, but um, so I think anything that, you know, and I think I, and I guess look at putting the other hat on if, if I was, you know, a bloke that'd always been the main breadwinner and had to change career because of job losses or whatever, then that must be devastating, you know, when you hit, our sort of age and then you've got you know that's probably brings a whole nother set that maybe I didn't have because I've never been a great wage earner you know I've just earned a wage but that's it you know um so yeah I think it's just yeah being realistic and what you know I think if you've got a niche it's really good yeah people say not to but um for me that has been the main thing I think to niche down We've got two um, businesses on our kind of brave startup at the moment, both in that kind of creative, both wanting to do kind of women's jewellery. So that's very good advice for them. I think so. And niche even more than that. Mm. Women's jewellery is massive because what you would buy, Lucy, is not what I would buy necessarily. I mean, it might be. I don't know. But um, <laughs> the chances of it are quite slim. And if yeah. you're trying to market a business... I know this is going on a little bit on tangent, but if you were trying to market a business, so if you sat down and said, I, I'm going to, how can I tell them to market this women's jewellery? You know, well, I don't know, who's the customer? You know, are they a 50 year old woman or are they a 25 year old woman? Because they're going to want, A, want different things, but also even if they like the same jewellery, which they might, they're going to be hanging out in different places. Do you know what I mean? They're not going to be sitting in the same place that you want to sort of market to them. So I think, knowing not just what you want to sell but who you want to sell to yeah is, is thing and I think being very you've got to be very very comfortable with putting yourself out there these days you know like I actually went to a meet up the other day and it was um with Holly Tucker do you know her she, yeah lovely, yeah okay and there was a lot of creatives I would say a lot of side hustle creatives women lovely women but and I did miss some of it. So I'm not sure exactly what everybody was doing. But I think they were talking about, you know, that they weren't comfortable putting themselves out there. And, you know, and I think that's really difficult these days. Mm. If you're shy or you're not comfortable in front of the camera, I think it's difficult, to be honest, because most of our routes to market are some sort of social connection, whether that doesn't have to be Instagram, you know, even if that's LinkedIn, it's kind of going that way now, isn't it? Where you've got to show up more than just a static 
post. Mm -hmm. Not there's not ways around all this because of course there is. You can do whatever you want to do. But I think the more comfortable you can get with putting yourself out there, I think the easier it is going to be because I might be doing this because like I say, the reason why I'm doing this, but one of you guys could be sitting there and thinking, actually, my mate runs this club that would be really cool, you know, and then like might come up in three months time and you might think, oh, actually there was this woman and I'm sure she did yeah. something like that. And, and you know, that's where the, the bigger things are going to come, isn't it? So, you know, you getting up and showing up and just there's so much sort of noise out there, I think, in the marketing, you know, in anything we're trying to sell. Well, we, you know, as a consumer, you see that because they're trying to sell to you constantly and oh, God, I'm over this, you know, you've got to find some way of breaking through that. So the more I personally think, the more you are, you really, really know what you're selling and who you're selling to, the easier it is. Everything mm -hmm. is easier then. So yeah, definitely. not that you have to stay in a niche because we won't be doing cinema seats forever because eventually I'm going to run out of stock. Yeah, either <laughs> cinema seats or people. Do you know one of the others going to happen? And um, we've already got our next product that I want to do that is in the pipeline at the moment, but it needs a bit of investment. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to. You know, it's hard, <laughs> isn't it? And like, yeah, my husband's not convinced that it's a goer, but you know, I think it is. So. Um, <laughs> But that, yeah, we're already like trying to look ahead and what, how we're going to grow the business and, you know, and also where do you want to grow your business to? Because, you know, you were always told grow, 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 aren't you? But actually I could have stayed as a one man band and that's not unsuccessful. Mm. Not at all. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I actually probably would make about the same money. I worked it out. If it was just me, I would be obviously selling a lot less but because I wouldn't be paying all the others to the things and everybody else's wages then I'd probably be earning about the same money if not possibly a bit more but um I don't want to do that because I like having a team around me I thrive off every people it's you know it's nice we come into work we have a laugh do you know what I mean and we do what we do and but yeah then that doesn't suit everybody you know like you could definitely be a one-man business and and still thrive and have a very successful business definitely definitely I think but no I think this has been sorry I don't want to cut you off I'm just really wary of everyone's time this has been I mean Lucy I don't think we I mean this is like just keep this whole thing and you can just don't need to do any of your courses it's been so informative <laughs> I just I go off on a bit of a tangent, so I don't know. It's if been I absolutely brilliant. Well, absolutely I think, brilliant. I think we should hear from Joe and Michelle because you've presumably got specific questions yourselves. Um, I don't know if I had specific questions. I just I've just found it really refreshing actually that you that you started doing something that you didn't enjoy, um, and that you've been really honest about. I hated it because I've. I've always had this illusion that you just you just find your thing and then it's just perfect and it's a dream and it's your passion and you love it and everything becomes easy and that's what I've held in my head for a very long time um so it's really nice to hear that you've got a creative career but that it's been hard and that you've not enjoyed it but um there are aspects of it that are work for you yeah I would say don't. yeah there are people definitely that's found the passion and love it but I think no matter how passionate you are about it, you know even say I'd loved it from the off that's going to wear a bit thin five years on when you've got customers breathing down your neck constantly mm -hmm. and people complaining about really random weird the weird the general public are just weird aren't they when you yeah. like I deal with them yeah. they're just like what the hell like I don't even know what you're talking about and um, yeah. I mean most of my customers are lovely I have to say I've been really really fortunate you know and who are who I get in I don't have many difficult customers really and um you know the odd time we get like general upholstery more like local customers it can be a bit tricky because they're just not what I'm used to you know and I'm like they're quibbling everything and I'm like no you know but I don't think you have to love everything but you have to love some of it so yeah. I don't love the upholstery but I do love I love the fabrics we work with I love the design aspect I love the vintage side of it I love the I actually love selling <laughs> weirdly <laughs> you know I quite like selling um I like marketing I quite enjoy I don't enjoy all of it but I enjoy quite enjoy that I don't really enjoy social media but I don't think anybody that's built a business on social media enjoys social media it's, it's fascinating you say that because actually I mean one of the things I think or one of the things that attracted me to you that made me phone you in the first place um was obviously I came across you on the social media and your brand we you do you know that we use you 
<laughs> like I, you know, your photo, your image on your website with the pink hair and the pink yeah, trousers. Yeah. You are our, you know, when we do a bit of a module on personal branding, I'm like, guess what, Carrie? But guess what business she's in? And people go, creative, fashion, but not my clothes. Yeah, yeah, you know, it worked because uh, you can see me on a very stressed day today. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like three day old hair, but um. I'm going on holiday tomorrow so it's been like a, this week's been a bit like oh my god just get everything out but um yeah we that this is what I would this is how I want when I was talking about like I very much focused on a brand rather than just an upholstery business that's why I went that way when I had my photos taken that's what I said to the photographer I want a fashion look I mean obviously like I don't love having my photo taken I'm not a very photogenic person and I was just like but I want that vibe I don't want me working and just sewing something because everybody's doing that and it, is, yeah. it doesn't work for me I want so I do there's lots that I do love I love the creative side of like that and the building you know the whole vision I love I do like I like my customers we do a lot of design consultations and I like them I enjoy that the whole process so I do love loads of it but I don't I think if you purely built a business based on your passion I think it's going to wear thin anyway I think it, it, well it does it, I mean the research around that is also really quite clear because yeah. after a while people do get bored you get bored it's monotonous it actually becomes not as creative as you once thought so say you were making I don't know say you were making beautiful dresses and you were I, I love the creativity that I can choose what fabrics I use and where I put a pocket and then suddenly as your business grows then customers say actually you know that blue floral that you did and I saw it here can you do me that but can you put the pocket here and here and this yeah. is and suddenly you haven't got the input in the same way you know, like your business model might obviously be different than that, but um, suddenly it's not as creative as you once thought. So to be honest, a lot of our seats are not that creative because the customer chooses everything, you know, so and we just do it. So, I mean, where it becomes creative is because um, because all most of our stuff is bespoke. We have a consultation and I push them towards I try and push them towards new fabrics and new looks and I say oh what about this and you thought pairing it with that and mm -hmm. you know you can get a bit more involved that way but if it was just purely like I saw these seats on your feed six months ago can you do them then actually you know it's not really that creative you're just you're doing the same process yeah. just yeah um but I am yeah I am still passionate about things don't let don't get me wrong I don't sit here and go I hate everything because I don't, I'd actually, I like working. I, d I don't mind working. I think even if I was had money, I think I'd still do something because I just couldn't sit around all day. But I literally think about my business 24 seven, 24 seven, because not just because I have to, but because I actually quite like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah sorry. Michelle, any questions? Um, uh, I don't think so. I, um, I've had a couple of businesses myself and over the years a long time ago and um I really I, I think I was just interested in knowing I don't know anything about marketing anymore I mean when I was doing it I was literally I was walking from gallery to gallery just leaving things for them to sell and uh, and I don't think the world works like that anymore so uh, I think you might be in luck though Michelle I think it's coming back round to that Oh, oh dear, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think it's almost going full circle back round to where we mm. used to be. You know, I, I couldn't have built this business without the way that we got the internet now. I just couldn't, you know, mm. like if I'd have had to put an ad in a paper, you know, like I think it would have been a long time coming and it would have been a very different business. Um, So, but I think at the moment, like everything is just, it's like I advertise on social media, you know, paid advertising and I've switched it all off now because I'm just like, I'm not getting anything, you know, like it wasn't working perfectly. And now it's, you know, it's just not because people just are just over it, you know, a little bit, you know, and <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's just all the time, you know, everything, sell, 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 sell. And you just like, so it's going back to more old school marketing. And, you know, there is still a massive part of it that with a lot of things um, that is still face to face going in, getting people to stock your product, you know, like talking to them. Um, newsletters are really big again. So trying to get, you know, like that, which is more old school marketing mm -hmm. style. Um, there's still all the PR, although I don't, I think magazine advertising as such is quite limited, but I think the whole PR thing is still there to get yourself out there. Um, 
but I found things like collaborations are really good. Mm. So if I can get somebody with a big audience to collaborate with me, then I'm basically reaching out to their audience as well as my own and vice versa and what I found it gets easier as you build up your business so most of mine now come to me and say do you want to collaborate on this and yeah and it's good for me so yeah I normally do but um, as long as it's collaboration is a funny word when people say do you want to collaborate sometimes they mean do you want to do some work for free (laughs) (laughs) no let me tell you where I'm at no not really Um, so yeah yeah there's a yeah there's some crazy bits to it now there is some crazy bits like the whole influencer marketing is it's a bit of key in it but um I mean it works but it is a bit like I personally don't want to do that because I don't want to give away two thousand pounds worth of goods to somebody yeah but you know not to say that it wouldn't work or I would never do it I have been asked a few times and I've declined but I think there's a place for it, it depends what you do you know what you mm. definitely what you do and who you're trying to reach but um yeah I think anybody can learn this stuff I don't think it's you know it's not like it used to be maybe where you had like mark you obviously you've got marketing agencies but that you need to go that route you know and pay a lot of money to get seen I think the whole social media has made it that anybody literally just pick your phone up and put yourself out there you know It doesn't have to be polished. It doesn't have to be beautiful. It doesn't matter. Just get out there and just, yeah. People are interested in people, aren't they? Yeah. Ultimately. My things that get the most reaction are things when I'm honest. If I have a a really bad day and decide to share some of that, I don't that often because I don't want to be that miserable bitch that's on Instagram. (laughs) Because there is a few of those, you know, and you're just like, yeah, we get it, love. But, you know, I don't want to. You know, it feels it feels like people are always moaning then, aren't they? I mean, I'm not free therapy. therapy, Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, and it's a bit boring in it after a while. And you're kind of like, I mean, I'm not a Pollyanna. I'm just not that person. You know, I'm a bit. "Mm." But um, I try and put like quite good vibes out there, but um, and balance everything. But every so often, you know, you go this and they're the way they're the ones that get the reaction because people relate to it and then will message me back and actually say oh my god yeah no this happened to me or blah 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 blah, blah, you know or yeah no I totally hear you I'm having one of those days and and Mm. what have you so I think it's a I actually think you know when we said about like the greatest skill is being able to just dig deep and 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 pick yourself back up and go again which like I've got bags of that like bags of it I can literally yeah no matter what I'll be on the floor but I, I will be back tomorrow fighting again but that's just my personality do you know what I mean like yeah. can't give up I used to have a sign in my studio my old studio and it said don't give up don't give in I stood up down there actually on my other notes board and you know the number of times I looked at that bloody poster in the early days and we're like I just want it all to stop and then I'd like don't give up don't give in do you know like I know it sounds silly but I'd actually like look at it and think yeah right come on come on you got this but yeah, you know, and I, yeah I think for people to then come along and have a chance to sit down and get that reality from you because if yeah. you're about to sink 20 grand or something into retraining, know what you're walking into. And you're not going to get that breath of honesty from Instagram, right? Because as no. you say, everyone's putting up one image. Putting up one. And yeah. I think also where you, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be upholstery. It could be anything. You know, they were kind of telling us a different story at college, I feel, than, than reality. Everyone does because everyone, every, every college or anywhere that's selling a course has an agenda and their yeah, agenda exactly. is to sell courses. It's not sell to courses sell courses and make, pay their wages. Yeah. So, and it's also, not to sell lifestyles. Yeah. And they don't no. have to tip. I think okay. as well, where we went was quite quite a small place uh, run by old school upholsterers, lovely blokes, but like it's a long time since they had to put themselves out as a new business in the world you know and the world's yeah. moved on massively in that period so what yeah. I felt and I don't think it was just me that you know actually there was because the, there was a real skills shortage in upholstery which there still is there still is but equally if you live within a radius of a college that's churning out another 30 of us every year then how much of a skill shortage in your area is there yeah do you know what well, I mean? Well, you, nobody's, you know, there's a bit of people travel a fair way, but there's still, you know, you're probably going to go, what, an hour, an hour and a half? How many people are doing what you're doing in that? And it doesn't mean that you can't be successful because there's loads of upholsterers in Chelmsford, um, but they're not on my radar because they're not doing what I'm doing and I'm not doing what they're doing. You know, they're completely different. But um, but there was a bit of that when you're trying to start out and get your foot in the door, it's really hard because, and I imagine it would be for any industry because it's, you know, 
you haven't yeah. got any it's hard yeah and you're suddenly like well they told me there's a you know people need this and like like where are these people that need my services <laughs> you know okay. the best example that I've come across is the interior design one so there was a, a woman who I mean she's actually given up interior design now she was the KLC one that got the prizes yeah. you know she worked for I don't know that famous woman Churchill Henrietta Spencer Churchill that one um and she was like the reality is you know, really skilled, graduated top of the class, got all the work. But unless you are prepared to put four grand of PR into marketing your business for about two years, it is really difficult to get it off the ground. That's why a lot of the people are doing it. And it's like 25 grand to do the course. Yeah, no, it's a, interior you design's know. a tough one, a really, really tough one. I know a few people that have done it. Like, I love all that, but I think, and I did consider, not before I did the upholstery, but I thought about, like, almost retraining again and going, because a lot of what we do kind of overlaps over into that. But, um, and I, but I don't know that I could do it, but I, I think I've got the right eye for it, if you know what I mean. I like all that thing I can put, you know, the, the designs together, but I just thought, oh my God, that's a tough, that's a tough market, that one, because it's saturated to ridiculous extents. And you've got to really, like, either have your own niche, so there's a woman actually that's working for me temporary at the moment, but she's an interior designer and she just moved back over here a few years ago from uh, abroad. And I think she'll be all right because she's got the expats. That's her thing. There's loads of them that have moved back and, you know, they're all women that are going to spend out on an interior designer. And so I think she'll do. But if you're just starting from without that, but, um, you know, I think, yeah, no, some, some areas, are you know, things are quite saturated. I, yeah. But I, I guess it depends what you are or what your, you know, what's your take? Why are you different? What are you offering that's nothing? So it depends what you are. I mean, if you're a painter, then you're going to be unique, aren't you? Because what you paint is not what anybody else can. But if it's a skill that every, you know, other people have got, you've just got to find your. And yeah, I actually think the main crux of it is how long can you survive without paying yourself? And is that realistically in long enough to make your business successful? So some people will start a business, won't they? And day one, they're making money. You know, there are plenty of people that have done that, but yeah. I think for a lot of us, that's not the case. Yeah. Actually. And um, yeah, we've got an electrician who's done that, you know, literally retrained yeah. at 56 or something, and yeah. he's making money from day one. I think electricians do really mm -hmm. well, actually. I think I was reading something yesterday about electricians, and I was like, yeah, maybe I should have retrained an electrician. Well, <laughs> he loves it because he's like, you know, every house is a different and it's a different problem. It's a different yeah. wiring. It's different. Setup. So he goes, it's basically it's problem solving. And if you like dealing with customers, yeah. you like dealing with people. Yeah. It's just, I, it's think, still... I think if you're in something as well that isn't like upholstery isn't an essential, you know, like not at my, in my type of upholstery. I mean, upholstery of some sort is because every house is going to have a sofa or an armchair or something, but nobody needs to come and pay me like 2000 pounds to upholster something pretty for them. Do you know what I mean? You're all going to live your lives very nicely without spending that money. So, you know, it's, yeah, you, what well, you've got to really be quite compelling to people, I think, to get them to part with luxury things that they don't really need, you know, um, that, mm. that's trickier, I think yeah, you know, yeah. so um I think it but I honestly think that is the main crux of it how long can you go or how much of your own money have you got have you got enough or are you prepared to work alongside it I know loads of people do. I did that for years and years and years worked alongside because I just couldn't afford not to do that um but it's not something that you necessarily would broadcast because you're trying to build your business up, you know and say that we are successful so that people will feel comfortable coming and spending with you kind of it's a bit of a funny one I think it's changing I think people's perceptions are changing but I I think there's that and yeah and where do you put the money what money you have got where do you put it do you know what I mean you could sink four grand into PR and not see a penny yeah. you just wouldn't see a return on that investment but you could spend four grand wisely and actually see like a really good investment you know return on that so I think it I think it's just been really clear what you're trying to do who to and how you're going to do it and what the timeline might be for that. Yeah, really uh, helpful. Thanks. Thank you so, so, so much. And thank you to everyone for taking up your time. Thank you so much for having um, me. Sorry if I waffled on. I do go off on tangents quite no, a lot. No, it was genuinely, Carrie, it's been absolutely amazing. I think anyone who watches this has been. If anybody's that. got a question afterwards or thinks of something, I'll, you know, just reach out to me. Like, especially if you're on Instagram, it's the easiest way because I'm sort of hanging out on there quite a lot. And um, I'm more than happy to, to jump on a one-to-one -one call with anybody or, or like answer anything. But yeah, wow. I hope I haven't. Fair. 
made it negative because it's not negative because I also have a lot of freedoms in what I do you know within reason I can you know if I want to take two one-on-ones yeah I can do one-on-ones I can take time off I can you know like my mom's not in great health so I, you know like I ended up being a bit of a sort of part-time carer not not full-on but it's going that way and like I don't know how I do that if I work for somebody mm. else you know it's bad mm. enough now on my own I'm like I can't go around now but you know like there's all these different we've all got different lives haven't we or kids that you know like my kids are a bit older now so it's not so much of that you know like having to be somewhere but um yeah you know there's all that side to it that is really really good that you you do have some flexibility thank you so much thank you Kerry thank you Michelle thank you Joe and thank you Uta